Hey guys, it's Yatuza with DB Academy, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I recreated the basses off of the tune Hold Up by Volatile Cycle and Drop Set. So, without further ado, let's get into the program. Okay, so before we get started, let's go ahead and listen to the original track. And this is what my recreation sounds like. Okay, so the first space that we're going to be taking a look at is going to be this little square one shot. So this space is just some square waves that are detuned. So oscillator A is minus one octave with minus 15 cents here on the fine tune. And oscillator B is minus one octave and the fine tune is plus 15. And oscillator A has the unison at 16 and oscillator B the unison at one. So the LFO is what's really like modulating everything here. And we've got LFO one that is modulating the level of the oscillator A. It's modulating the level of oscillator B. So if we go into the effects tab, we can also see that it is also put onto the drive parameter and that would be it for this sound actually so let's go ahead and initialize the preset and we're going to want to choose square waves for both of these oscillators so let's go and choose basic shape for oscillator a oscillator b and let's choose the square wave then we will decrease the octave on both of these and also decrease 15 cents on the first fine tune parameter and increase 15 cents on the oscillator B's parameter. So after that, we'll put the voices at 16 and we will set the LFO to this shape right here, the ramp shape. And we'll set this to the level of oscillator A and the level of oscillator B. Go ahead and turn the noise on, put it to alpha noise, and we will turn on this filter so that affects oscillator A and B. Put the cutoff at around 800 Resonance 35% and drive at around 30%. And let's go on to the distortion and turn on asymmetrical and also set the LFO1 to the drive. So for LFO1, you want to set it to trigger mode and we will turn off the BPM and set it to 1.7 Hertz. So let's set the resonance at around 40% and the cutoff at around 455. And that would be it for this patch. Yeah, so it was a really easy one and I have some trash on it, but it's not doing much, just very very light distortion on here and i have it on the digital bump harder setting that's that and after trash i just have a v clip just clipping the signal so let's move on to the main bass now so this is what the main bass sounds like and it consists of two layers one is lower sub layer and the other one is like a mid high layer with some auto pan it's like uh, modulating the amplitude of the signal so let's go on to the main bass patch here. All right, so this patch consists of two saw waves. So the only difference on these saw waves is that I went in here and actually um, matched the level of bin four and five. So they're flush here. And that's what creates the kind of warp there on the saw wave. So let's go over to the FX tab. Let's see, we have some distortion, some compression and some reverb. And the drive of the distortion is all the way up with the mix at around 50. The LFO is modulating the master tune and envelope two is also modulating the master tune of this patch. So let's go ahead and initialize a preset and I'll show you how I made this one. And we're going to choose these two saw waves for both of them. Let's put unison in two for the both of them and detune them just around 8% or just 16 is okay, yeah. And let's go over to the pencil and go over to bin four Put it down all the way to 24 and also then 25 to 24%. Then we'll decrease the volume, turn on FM from B, and we also turn oscillator A minus one octave and the sub minus one octave. Let's also turn on the noise and we will go over to the one that says ARP white. You can also turn on the filter and open the cutoff all the way up resonance all the way down and make sure it is also affecting oscillator B, the noise and sub. So let's go over to envelope two and put the sustain all the way down and we'll put the decay to around 140 milliseconds. That's good. 
and lower this a little bit more. Cool. Then we will go into the matrix and set envelope two to the global master tune and set this parameter here to 12. And then we go over to LFO one and put it on this ramp shape like this. And then also set that to the global master tune, but we're going to put that to four and make sure to set that to trigger and to two bars. Cool. So we're getting close. Just lower the volume of the sub here and go into the effects tab, turn on the distortion, the compression and the reverb. Let's lower the dry wet to around 50% and we'll increase the drive all the way up and multiband. Let's also decrease the decay of the reverb and make sure we're rolling off that low end of the reverb too. So I think that would be it. Let me just turn on the filter and see if it matches. The mid bass is actually the same patch, but I've just post processed it differently. I have a auto filter just rolling off all that low end. Then I have put some erosion with the amount at 80.4 and another auto filter just taming that high end and um, making sure that I don't have any harsh frequencies. Then I have an auto pan with the rate at 7.85 hertz and the amount at 61.9. And the phase is at zero, so it means it's just affecting the amplitude. And after the auto pan, I have an EQ8. So again, just to make sure I don't have any low end, any low end on my distortion channel. All right, so let's also turn up the drive of the filter to around 60% and make sure that in the matrix, LFO1 is affecting the master tune correctly. So the type should be set to bipolar. And this is what this face sounds like right now. So oh, now let's just put the filter on it and this is what it sounds like with the mid layer now. So the mid layer is exactly the same bass. So if I remove all the effects, you will hear that it's the same subby bass. I just post process it differently. So instead of cutting out the high end, I'm actually using that high end to create some distortion. So I cut it out at 1.43 kilohertz and I have the erosion set to 80% and the width at 1.99 with the frequency at 6.42 kilohertz and the auto filter at 4.72 kilohertz. I also have the auto pan set to zero phase so it's modulating the amplitude of the signal and I'm just cutting out all of the low end with an EQ8 at the end of that chain. On the bus I just have some saturation with 4 db of drive and some glue compressor with the soft clipping and a makeup gain at 2.06 so this is what the bass sounds like now let's move on to the second bass now the second bass is a similar process it has a sub low layer and a mid high distortion layer so let's just go into the sub patch so you know how i made it so for this patch i'm using a sine wave and it is being fm'd with the monster 7 wavetable and this is what it sounds like without that filter turned on so very, very different. And I'm using those upper harmonics to create, you know, that whole distortion layer that's going on on top. So yeah, let's go on to the effects. As you can see, I have some hyper dimension. I don't think that's turned on actually. And the chorus isn't turned on anyway. So I have some distortion, EQ, compression, and reverb. And I have the tube set at set the drive at maximum. And I have the LFO one thing. So like the frequency of the EQ, and then I also have it modulating the wavetable position of oscillator B, the level of oscillator A, and the level of the noise. So let's go into a new serum and I'll teach you how to make this sound. Perfect, so let's go into basic shapes and go on to the sine wave here, and then we go on to the spectral tab and choose monster seven. Now for LFO one, we're going to want to make it this shape and put the level of oscillator B all the way down and also turn down the level of oscillator A and put alpha one on that level. Let's turn on F and let's also put alpha one on the noise here. We can also put alpha one onto the wavetail position and set that to around 80, 86, okay? And we'll have it move back and forth as well. And we'll open the cutoff all the way up. So this is what that sounds like now. Okay, so we're right, we're getting close now. Okay, so let's go on to the effects tab and turn on the distortion, the compression, and the EQ along with the reverb. And we're going to want to put alpha 1 to the frequency parameter on the right and 
alpha 1 to this frequency parameter on the left. This one will start at around 900 hertz and put it in both of them in peak mode. And we're going to decrease the gain on this one and increase it on this one. So alpha 1 is going to be modulating that EQ. So that's sounding pretty spot on already. Just increase some gain here. And that would be it. So the only thing that's missing now is that filter at the end. And this is what it sounds like with the mid layer. And so the mid layer is exactly the same bass patch. And I'm just increasing like 3 dB of gain here. I'm filtering out the low end from 250 hertz and above. And I'm adding some rift after that filter. And I'm using the smeared tube setting here. And that's where that whole tone is coming from. And then I have another auto filter just rolling off that high end. So that would be it for this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it and learned something new for your own tunes. Again, my name is Yutuza with DB Academy, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.